Hey everyone, I'm Rob D, he's Rob D, and we're from Property Hub. And you know what? When you invest in property, it's easy to splash the cash. Yep, but are those expenses worth it? Or a waste of money? Well, we're here to let you know. First on our list are surveys. Now, if you're buying a property with a mortgage, your mortgage provider will want you to have a survey. In fact, they'll insist you have a survey. But that survey is often just a valuation survey to assess the value of the property and won't talk about the condition of the property. And if it does, it'll be very high level. Although you have the option to get a more comprehensive survey beyond that point. You might get a home buyer survey or a building survey. If you get a home buyer survey, the surveyor will go into the property. They will assess the condition of the property but not do a deep dive. It will just be a basic report, but it will give you some advice on repairs, possibly point out things like damp, although you can't guarantee it. If you want that extra level of peace of mind, then you want to get a building survey and the surveyor will give the property a proper once over. It's a real in-depth look at the property's condition. They'll look at the defects, repairs, and how to maintain the property. You'll get a lot of information for your money. Now, should you stick with a valuation survey or pay the extra to go up to a home buyer or a building survey? Well, it depends. If your property is new, then a valuation survey is almost good enough because you're almost certainly gonna have a builder's warranty, which will protect the property for up to 10 years. But if that warranty is issued, then you know inspections have taken place on that property as well to make sure it's met the standards of that warranty provider. So if it's within 10 years old and it has a warranty, then a valuation survey is probably enough and you don't need to spend the extra money. If the property is older, especially if you get into 50 years plus, then you will want to get something more than a valuation report. However, if you're doing that, there's no point in trying to save a couple of hundred quid by going for the mediocre report, the home buyer's report. For a little bit more, you can get the full survey, the full breakdown. So our recommendation is either go for the basic report if it's newish, or if it's older, go for the full survey, but don't bother with the halfway house, the home buyer's report. Next on our list is insurance. Is it worth it? Well, it depends which type of insurance you're talking about. If you've got a house, then buildings insurance is an absolute essential. It'll be a condition of your mortgage. And in any case, you wouldn't want to have to meet the whole cost of rebuilding the house if the worst happened. So buildings insurance for houses is a definite yes. For flats, buildings insurance is usually included in the service charge that you pay. So check the information from the freeholder to make sure that's the case. What about contents insurance? Well, tenants will need to insure their own contents, so you'll need to make sure that they're aware of that. For landlord contents, it depends. If you're providing a property furnished and the furnishings are particularly expensive, then you might take the view that it is worth it. But if you're only providing basic furnishings or none at all, and all that's in the property is carpets and curtains maybe, then I would argue that it's not worth it because the chances of something like a flood causing widespread damage is slim and the cost to replace out of your own pocket wouldn't be that high anyway. But of course you can take a view. Like always with insurance, it's about peace of mind and it's about protecting you against the worst case. Then there's rent guarantee insurance, which means that if the tenant stops paying the rent, the insurance will kick in and make sure that you're not out of pocket. Is it worth it? Well, some people argue that insurers will only cover tenants who have got great jobs, have got a squeaky clean credit file and so on. Therefore, you're only insuring against the tenants who are most likely to pay you anyway. Um, to an extent, that's true. But rental income is the lifeblood of a property business. So although it will cost you, you could make the argument that having the certainty of that rental income is worth a lot. And it will also cut down the size of the emergency fund that you need to keep, thus freeing up cash to use elsewhere. So with insurance, it always comes down to your own risk tolerance and your own circumstances, but hopefully that'll give you a bit of a guide. Next on our list is boiler cover. Should you pay for it? Well, it depends. If you've got a new boiler, then no. You've probably got a warranty. So at that point, why would you get cover? But as the boiler gets older, you may consider getting some sort of boiler cover. But before you do, check on your warranty. Some boilers come with a one year warranty, some come with a two year warranty, but there are boilers out there that come with a 10 year warranty. And if you are replacing your boiler, it might be worth spending that little bit extra to get that boiler. Because actually, if you get a cheaper boiler and then pay for 10 years of cover, you may end up paying more out. But if you've already got a boiler, you haven't got a warranty, and you've had it for a few years, then you may want to consider cover. And you may not want to just limit it to just basic insurance. You should probably look at cover where they will come out any time of day or night and fix the boiler. Because if you have tenants and the boiler goes, 
they probably don't want to wait a week to get it sorted. So let's move on to letting agents. Are they worth it? A lot of people will be screaming no at their screens right now if they've had a bad experience with letting agents, but they can be great value depending on how you value your time. For example, if you've got a property where the rent is £500 a month, full management is going to cost you somewhere roughly around £50 a month plus VAT. So let's say on average there's an hour's worth of work to be done on that property. If you value your time at more than £50 an hour, then it's a good deal. Of course though, it tends not to be that way. It tends to be the case that nothing will happen for a few months, then suddenly something will happen out of the blue that's time consuming and urgent. That makes letting agents even better value because chances are you're not going to want to drop everything you're doing and suddenly react to that situation, even if you can. However, the caveat here is that the agent has to be a good one because if you've got a poor agent, you'll spend just as much time chasing them as you would have done dealing with the issue yourself in the first place. And also, of course, letting agents are only ever good value if you don't want to be managing the property yourself. Some people enjoy being hands-on, and if that's the case, you'd be mad to pay anyone else to do it for you. But if you're not in that situation, then letting agents can be great value, but make sure you pick a good one. Another area you may consider spending money is on property courses. There are loads out there, and many of them charge. Our YouTube channel's free, and on our website, you've got loads of free courses as well. But elsewhere, there's a lot of people who are charging for information. Is it worth it? Well, it depends on the course. It depends on a lot of things, actually. We've got another YouTube video called Are Property Investment Courses Worth It? If you want to watch that video, then you can click the link here, or you can find a link in the description below. So there you go. Hopefully, we've helped you keep a few more pounds in your pocket. But you know what? I've got a freebie for you that's going to really help you as a property investor. Subscribe into this channel, so make sure you do that now and hit that notification bell.